Hello Internet, today we are going to be implementing a stepped gradient in Unity. Um, if you're curious what that means, this is sort of a quick example that I put together for the Windows terminal. Um, this example is out on my website, you can go and grab that, there's a link in the description. Um, but basically a stepped gradient is a gradient where there are hard steps between each of the different colors in that gradient. In this case, we have the pride flag, so there's six different colors that uh, it transitions between. And uh, there's, there's sort of a hard step between each of those. It's not just a smooth color change. Um, the way this is done is using two uh, commands, the lerp and step command. Uh, and we're just gonna kind of walk through it. It's sort of a thing that you can build and do whatever you want. Um, so you can take what we're, we're discussing here and kind of expand it or contract it or do what, it, what you want with it to kind of get the same thing. Again, uh, there's a link to this that also has some shader toy examples that you can kind of play with in your browser, things like that, uh, if you if you want to really play with this and, and see how it all works. Um, but the way this works, uh, if we go into Unity, uh, we have this unlit shader. Uh, what an unlit shader in Unity means is there's a vertex and fragment shader. We don't care what the vertex shader is doing, that's just telling Unity where to draw the mesh. Uh, we do care about the fragment shader though, and it's it's relatively... Straightforward, um, Unity's fragment shaders are short. They are three lines, which pretty much is look up a texture and draw that texture. And that's that's it. Uh, if you want, we can get rid of all of this. Not needed. Basically, all you need to do here is return a color. The color output here is what is going to be drawn at that pixel for the mesh. Um, this is based off of all, all, all sorts of mesh parameters. Um, we're going to be using the UV to figure out where our gradient is, uh, probably the X axis or wh whatever we want to call it, the X coordinate in our, in our, in our meshes UV. Uh, and so how this works is we need some sort of result. So let's create a float for, and we're just going to say the result is equal to a float for of red. So let's just do this. Um, the way this works is float for is going to be red, green, blue, and then the alpha transparency. So in this case, we have red and it is completely opaque. Uh, if we change any of those, you'll get a different color. Uh, because we're hard transitioning here, the colors shouldn't matter. You can assign any color and it should look fine as long as those colors work well together. Um, sometimes you might want to like hue shift between them if you're doing an actual gradient instead of just linearly interpolating like we're doing. That doesn't matter here because uh, we will never be in between the two colors. We'll always be exactly on one or the other. All right. So what this has done is created a red thing. Uh, we haven't changed our results, so let's just return that. And just to prove things, let's just get rid of all the extra code. Our entire shader is two lines, pretty much. There's a bunch of other stuff, but that's all Unity stuff. We can ignore that. This is the part we care about. It's two lines. Um, and so what's going on here is red. Um, we just get this nice red thing. Uh, you can see we get a red sphere. Every every pixel in this mesh is red. Uh, what we want to do now is step through this. And so this is our first step, the first step of our gradient. Effectively, we have a gradient where there's one step and it's red. Um, then what we want to do is what happens if we have a point in our gradient that is not at zero? Um, so we have a second point in our gradient. To do that, we're going to modify the result and we're sort of going to chain these commands to build what we want. In our case, we're going to have three different colors. We're going to transition between the three main colors, so red, green, and then blue. Um, and the way this works is we're going to create a lerp. Lerp is a linear interpolation between two different values. Um, so the first value is going to be a result. That's the, the default value. And then the, the next value is going to be the color that is going to be the next thing in our gradient. Uh, so in this case, we're going to do green. Oops, there we go. We, we want it to be opaque. Uh, and then what we want to do is figure out how to select between one or the other. Um, the, the purpose of this step is, or, or, or the purpose of this way of approaching this problem is to avoid if statements and sort of uh, jumping. And it also means that each key in your gradient is one line of code. Uh, so what we can do here is do step. And then the value that we need to exceed in order to uh, draw our new color. So in this case, we're doing three different colors. So we're just going to do one third of our texture of our ground represents this uh, thing. 
Uh, and we're just going to pass in i.uv.x. There we go. Uh, and so what this is doing, step is a value that returns zero or one from itself. Uh, it will return zero if the right hand side is less than the left hand side. Uh, otherwise it will return one. So in this case, if our uvx is like 0.1, we're below 0 0.33, and so we're going to return zero. But if we return uh, 0 0.75, for example, that is greater than it, so we're actually going to return one. What that means is we're either returning zero. If we return zero, we're just going to use the original result. Um, so we're just going to continually use this result. So effectively, we are stuck and locked in at this red value. But if we go higher than it, we're going to move forward in our gradient and select the next color to, to use. Uh, and we can continue this pattern. So if we select blue and do that at 0 0.67, so another third of a step, we don't need to change the coordinate we're using. It's, it's all just being plugged in for, for us. But this is going to switch over to blue if we're greater than 0 0.67. Uh, what this is actually doing is each step, if we do 0 0.67, it's actually going to assign it to red. Then it's going to realize it's greater than 0 0.33 and assign it to blue right here. And then it's going to realize it's zero, greater than 0 0.67 and assign it to, or assign it to green and then assign it to blue. Colors are hard. <laughs> but, but basically this is stepping through this. It's not just selecting one answer. It's actually doing each of the solutions in, in, in time and then just taking whatever the final result is. Um, so it's sort of mutating it and doing it in a, in a state based way. So if we actually look at what this gets us, we should get three lines. Uh, did I, <laughs> we, we need to save. All right. Uh, and I broke it. Uh, what's going on here? Type constructor line 50. <laughs> What? Float four. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, going great. Uh, there we go. Uh, so we switch that to float four, uh, actually get our types right, and we get these three lines. Uh, and so we, we start on the left hand side, we get red, and then green, and then blue. And the, we get those nice hard lines. No matter how close we get to this, they should always be a hard line. Uh, and that's because that we are, the, there's no in between. There's no way we can return like 0 0.5 in this case. You could use what's called a smooth step, which actually has an interpolation between the values. Um, in that case, step takes three values, and if, it's in if the result is in between the two boundaries, it's actually going to return some interpolation between those. Um, it's similar to a LERP, um, but slightly different. Uh, confusing in that way. It's not actually a linear interpolation. It's something else. Um, so. What this is doing is giving us a way to kind of define these key points. In this case, I defined it by thirds, but they don't have to be thirds. If I want this to be 0 0.1, so we'll have 0.1% or 10%, I guess, of our, of our mesh is going to have red. And then 57% uh, is going to have green. And then the remainder is going to have blue. This also should work. Uh, and you can kind of tweak this however, however makes sense in whatever you're doing. You can change the colors. You can add additional steps. Uh, the only real thing to note is these should always be incrementing and be greater than one another. So each key should, should, inc uh, should be greater. So we, we go from zero. Uh, the first result does not need it because it's always going to start at that first thing. What we're doing is a state machine and we're stepping through the state. So the first state always should be assigned. <clears throat> And then we just, uh, we modify that, but we start at 0 0.1, uh, and then we go to 0 0.67. If we go back to say red and say 0 0.5, um, this is less useful because all this is doing is invalidating this entire line. Uh, it, this next step is always going to be true if this one is. And so in that case, there's no reason for this. And what we're going to see is we're going to get a, uh, red thing and we're never going to see blue. There's no way we could see blue in this scenario. Uh, so, so something to keep in mind that as long as these step forward, uh, it should work. So if we change it this way, that red gets moved and is now uh, in between the, the uh, green and the blue.
like this. Uh, so you, you can kind of play with this and do whatever you want. Um, again, there's a there's a pride shader on my website that kind of walks through doing the flag and also does some animations on it and uh, walks you through how to actually set this up in a terminal. Um, that's a new feature in, in the Windows terminal. Um, this is kind of just a universal thing, though, and should work in any any language. This this is a Unity example, but you can take it anywhere. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if there's questions on this or comments or you have uh, other things that you want me to look at and, and cover, uh, let me know in the comments below and I will try to take a look as soon as I can. Uh, but that's it for now. So hopefully this is useful and you can use it in your projects. Uh, and until next time, see you, Internet.